Welcome to MiningStockTalk.com. I am your host, Tacoa Da Silva. With me on today's program is Jim Rogers. Jim, how would you describe the current state of economies in the world right now? Well, they're being force-fed, uh, you know, the gigantic amounts of money being pumped into the world economy by governments and central banks, and the people receiving that money are better off. The people who don't receive that money are not better off, and the people ultimately who have to provide that money are certainly not better off. So we have a temporary respite where things look better and, in fact, are much better for some people, but overall it's making the situation worse, not better over the longer term. Jim, what do you see coming down the road for common people, especially of the West? Well, what's going to happen in the the West is you're going to have more currency turmoil, you're going to have more debt turmoil, you're going to have higher interest rates, you're going to have higher inflation. Most people um, in the West are going to have a reduced standard of living over the next decade or two, and it's not going to be great. Jim, how can the average American prepare for what's coming? Well, the average American should figure out what he or she knows best and then try to use that as a way to protect uh, herself. I mean, if you know a lot about agriculture, maybe you should focus on agriculture with your money and your investments and your time. If you know a a great deal about cars, same thing. Focus there with your career, your time, your investment, your everything, because the only way you're going to survive all this is to focus on what you know best, what you love the most, and that is where you should be focusing your efforts in trying to get out of this. You might also start learning about foreign countries, foreign currencies, and maybe real assets. One way historically to protect yourself has been to own real assets in times of serious turmoil. In my view, it will be again. One of your suggestions in the past, especially to Americans, has been to learn another language, specifically Chinese. Outside of that, Jim, would you recommend Americans of moderate means to consider leaving the U.S.? Well, moving, whether you move from, you know, (coughs) Kentucky to Ohio or moving from Kentucky to Australia entails a gigantic amount of uh, emotional and intellectual courage, and uh, thought. You have to really think this through. Some people uh, will be better off moving. Uh, I moved to Asia primarily because I want my children to grow up speaking Mandarin, Chinese, um, because I think that will be extremely important for them in the future. But I cannot advise anybody to move because uh, that's something that only a person a person can make for him or herself. It's a big decision and a big move. Jim, at the tail end of 08, as we went into that crash, you uh, indicated that forced liquidations were the main culprit behind collapsing commodity prices. Do we still have a ways to go in any forced liquidation? Are we fully through that? Well, we're certainly through uh, the first phase. You know, commodities have rallied a great deal. Metals have gone through the roof in the past 15 months or so, oil, most things. Um, We did have forced liquidation. As you know, AIG and Lehman were both big, big, big players in commodities. They went bankrupt. They had to liquidate. Artificial forced liquidation, uh, but that caused others to have to liquidate. We're certainly finished with that phase, but look, there could be other forced liquidation. If the UK or somebody suddenly goes bankrupt, we have a lot more forced liquidation in the world. And as I said earlier, there's going to be more currency turmoil and debt turmoil in the world. Uh, the next time things start slowing down will be worse than the last time because many governments have now increased their debt by staggering amounts. And it's going to be worse. So there will probably be some forced liquidation. But... In such a circumstance, I'd rather have real assets rather than paper assets because, well, first of all, shortages are developing in real assets. Oil reserves are declining, et cetera. And secondly, 
governments will print even more money. And whenever governments have printed a lot of money, you're better off owning real assets than paper assets. Jim, do you expect the mining industry to be a strong place to be? I'd rather be in real assets than in other assets. We are in a period now where there's a shift from the financial centers to the producers of real goods. You know, throughout history, we've had long periods when financial centers have been in charge and then followed by long periods when producers of real goods, miners, farmers, etc., have been in charge. That shift is taking place again. I mean, the city of London is essentially bankrupt. Wall Street has serious problems, and you're going to find that over the next 30 years, financial centers, you see what's going on in Washington, they're doing their best, and it's going to get worse, to stomp on Wall Street. London's already done a lot of it. No, much better off being in other fields than in finance in the next two, three, four decades. In the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, Wall Street and the city of London were backwaters. Nobody with any brains went, went to Wall Street or the city because it was just a hopeless backwater. Well, that changed. Had a big bull market, and everybody got an MBA. Well, they all made mistakes. They should have gone and gotten A&M degrees, but that'll change. Jim, what do you think needs to happen for our leaders to begin taking this thing seriously, the supply-demand shortfalls in just about all commodities? Well, what will happen, what what has always happened, that as the shortages develop more and more, prices will go up a great deal. People will then notice even more. Politicians will shriek and scream and blame it on everybody in sight except themselves. (laughs) <laughs> but eventually, uh, that will bring out more supply. It will reduce demand. And eventually, the bull market will come to an end. They always have, anyway. You know, the cure for higher prices is higher prices. That means people become farmers instead of getting MBAs. If prices of cotton go high enough, they'll plant cotton in Central Park. You know, if the price of oil goes high enough, They'll drill for oil on the White House lawn. So as prices go higher, I promise you, people will notice and things will happen. What would you say about the equity markets here? Well, I'm not buying shares uh, in the U.S. You know, they skyrocketed. They went through the roof for about a year. Uh, I don't like to buy anything that's grown up a great deal. I have added a couple of shorts, say two, three, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, but I haven't uh, bought anything in the U.S. or anywhere for that matter, any stocks, for some time. They've been on a tear. When I, anyway, don't like to buy after things have gone up, gone straight up for several months. Okay. Now, is it some of the, um, what you've been saying to be weaker sectors for a while now that you're shorting here, the financials, insurance groups, things of this nature? Well, I shorted one major world bank, and I shorted an index. Uh, I don't have any – I don't know many things that are in excess. I don't see many manias in the world right now, Uh, any bubbles. Uh, There are a couple of bubbles, but that's what I like to shore. There may be things that are too high in price. You know, stocks may be too high. That's different from being in a bubble, of being in a mania. I don't see many things. I mean, finance is certainly, finance may be too high, and I just got through saying I shorted a big bank, but uh, these things aren't in bubbles, not yet. If you know of any great bubbles, let me know, because I'm looking for short. Do you think there could be a time here soon where you would consider shorting treasuries, bond debt instruments, especially now that we're seeing what's been happening with Greece? No, of course. Um, I am not short treasuries. Um, That's one of the two bubbles I see developing in the world. But I'm not short treasuries yet because, you know, they can do – whenever there's a bubble, things, crazy things happen. And that's why I'm not short. I've shorted enough bubbles in my life 
to know it's usually better to wait. Uh, so I'm waiting on the on the assumption or fear or whatever that the Federal Reserve or somebody will drive bonds up again. I hope that I'm smart enough to short U.S. government long bonds at some time in the foreseeable future, but that hasn't happened yet. How do you remain independent in your thought and in your perception on these markets when you've got so many people arguing on the other side? Well, one thing I've learned is I'm, I'm usually better off coming up with my own perceptions, analysis, ideas. I don't really read or talk to other people, so I make my own opinions. But over the years, I've learned that, you know, sometimes I get it right. I've also learned over the years that especially if everybody says you're wrong, there's a very good chance that you're right. You know, when everybody's thinking the same way, usually somebody's not, most people are not thinking. They're just following each other. So just a good sign for me when few people agree with me. Jim, seeing what's been happening in the currency markets right now, all the stimulation that we have, what kind of upside limitations do you think we could see in gold and silver? Well, I mean, who knows? You can ask me in 30 years. I, there's never anything as such as a upside limitation. I mean, things, nothing can go to the moon, but things can go up awfully high. Uh, I would expect gold and silver to be much higher over the next decade or two because governments around the world are printing money and debasing their currencies. There's not a lot of new gold or silver mines coming on stream. Now, there are lots of gold reserves, huge gold reserves, not so many for silver. So the prices can go, go much, much, much higher, and I expect them to. I have no idea when. I mean, gold right now is making all-time highs in, in silver currency. I don't like to buy anything making all-time highs. Uh, it's, it's near an all-time high in U.S. dollars. So I'm watching gold. I mean, I'm not... If I were going to do something in precious metals, I would probably take a closer look at silver or palladium or platinum or something. But no, they can go, they can go much, much higher. If the dollar collapses, then <laughs> infinity is the, uh, is the, is the possibility. You know, when, when a currency goes to zero, the, the gold price or any price in that currency will go to the moon. How can people find your books and learn more about you? Well, you go to any bookstore or any any online book service. Or you go to my my website. There are five that I've done. They're all listed on jimrogers.com. Uh, or just go to Amazon or go to the bookstore and say, what books have Jim Rogers done? What projects are you working on, Jim, currently? i got two little girls. One is two and one is six. And that's my... Well, that's my major focus now. I came to parenthood late, and uh, so I don't want to miss it. And being a parent is so, so, so much fun. I cannot get enough of it. Jim, thanks for coming on the program. Thank you. Thank you.